John is the CEO of BlackBerry, and he joins us this morning to talk a little bit more about the quarter. John, welcome back. Thanks for, for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, John. Well, what's, what's the biggest takeaway, um, do you think, for investors, the, the message that you have after this, uh, this quarter? I think given um, you know all the all the situation with pandemics and um, and and the unfortunate uh, shutdown, lockdown, uh, on and off uh, around the world, I think that the the most gratifying thing is you know our business continue to do well uh, in most areas. Uh, we do have some challenging areas, uh, but the team was able to deliver a, a, a pretty satisfying quarter, I would say. Uh, in, a, in an environment that that everybody is getting used to, so we now know that if we could do that, you know, when better days come around, and they will, uh, uh, we we will be ready to to execute and execute well. So there's a little to unpack in what you're you're saying there. Let's talk about. In COVID-19, the reality, um, I mean, literally, I'm joining you, I'm broadcasting from home, and I've been doing this for a long time, and a lot of people continue to work from home, and that was very clearly um, a theme for you during the quarter. Maybe explain to us that part of your business that has been very busy, preoccupied, if you will, because of the need for a lot of people to work from home. Uh, good question. So there are many components. I mean, uh, uh, like you said, unpack. You know, you you'd be sorry you asked me to unpack this. It's a long. <laughs> uh, 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 the first thing is, you know, everybody who are not set up to completely work remote from home, and you know, even a lot of the banks, uh, financial institutions around the world, they of course are set up to work um, remotely, but they don't set up work remotely everywhere in the world. But they have to 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 address that reality. You know, that give us a, 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 a demand on our software, uh, buying more. Uh, there is a couple of areas that people are very interested in. The secure communication area, there's a lot of noise mm. around it. Uh, you, know, we, you know, we have our BPM, which is the, the Canadian government uses to, to communicate. Um, it, the, the whole mobility communication has now become more critical uh, as people work remotely everywhere. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the emergency management or, or crisis management or event management software, that's very important because, you know, now, now everything is, you know, whether unfortunate situation, whether school has a pandemic, you know, has, uh, you know, kids who have COVID-19 and so forth, you know, that, that whole situation needs to be addressed and addressed in a very orderly manner, in a very secure manner, mm -hmm. in a timely manner. And so those are, so those are all the software that we do. Then, of course, the cybersecurity, and I don't have to go into detail of that. No, um, although I think there is some important context on the cyber security front because you've joined us in the past. I mean, you guys made a big bet in the acquisition of Silence. It was a huge transaction for you. Um, what's been interesting, I think, for a lot of people in the markets, and John, you know this story well, I mean, there are rival players out there. We saw IPOs, for example, um, at, at least one of your very well-known rivals that um, you know got a lot of attention from investors, um, whereas I think for investors in Black, Blackberry, um, we have not seen that same response to technology uh, as a technology stock or, or a security play. What's, what's been your reaction to that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, we we bought Silence because of one piece of technology is very important to us, which is the endpoint protection technology. Um, we bought is uh, something, uh, and they they were very famous for doing something called the endpoint prediction. You know, protection prediction. So, so well, most people call it EPP technology. So we bought that technology because we need to enable that into, you know, you know well that we do well in, in the automobile industry, for example, you know, a, a car and, and edge computing. Uh, it, that's very important for us to be able to secure that, that particular endpoint. So we bought sidelines to make that bad strategically for that mm. particular reason. And, and, and then, you know, but the market is very much focused on EDR market, which is the detect and remediation market, which is one you were talking about, you know, a competitor of mine that getting all the attention. Uh, we have right. since caught up with that. We caught up with that now. Um, we have a cloud version coming out in the next three to six months. So there's been, there's been a lot of work being done to combine our EPP technology, which we're the number one in the world, uh, with the EDR technology, which we which we are we we have it today, 
So when we take it a level higher to address the enterprise using a technology platform called Spark. But anyway, before I confuse anybody, um, what, you, what the answer, a simple answer to your question is, we weren't ready to intercept the market uh, where my competitors, uh, you know, they can't do much on EPP, they do well in EDR, and, and they, they were able to take advantage of that. But that's no more, no more true anymore. I mean, it's no longer true. Uh, yeah. You know, you see us, you see us growing very well next year in a combined space of the cyber. Okay, um, that's uh, that's interesting insight. We, I'm just going to try to squeeze a couple quick ones in here. You talked about the autos. Sure. This already came up in our coverage of your quarter, and obviously Q and X. I mean, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening before the pandemic and security in the vehicle. But just the simple fact that fewer people may be buying cars during this pandemic. What's your outlook for that part of the business? Uh, we expect sequentially starting to come back to normal, and we expect a normal. Mm. Uh, we come back to a normal quarter uh, beginning of next fiscal year, which is the uh, March, March, April, May timeframe. Okay, and then um, just thinking of dates. Um, the beginning of November, there's there's one date on the calendar a lot of people, certainly in the United States, have been circling right now, but it's right around that time that there will be a U.S. election that you will actually be marking uh, seven years in this job as CEO at BlackBerry. Um, give us a sense on the road ahead for you. Well, uh, you know my contract, I have a new contract that doesn't end until 2023, so I think the company has to put up with me for a while, um, and uh, <laughs> but, but I'm feeling pretty. Good. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, I'm feeling that that you know we have in our auto industry, in our cybersecurity side. I think the market that we pick to participate in is a very good market, a very robust, uh, and the product we have a very strong. Uh, BlackBerry is always a strong big product. You know, maybe you could accuse that we don't do as well in the sales and marketing side, but that will change. Um, we, we put in a ton of efforts around it and really good people that we recruited. And so, so that will change. That will change very soon. So um, I, I am going to look forward to the next three years, um, you know, for my, for my second term. John, appreciate it as always. Thanks very much for being with us on a busy morning. Thank, thank you, John. Nice talking to you. That's John. Uh, you as well, John Chen, the CEO of BlackBerry. Joining